Hi, this is Tom Kennedy, and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi, everyone. John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com, and we are here today on location in Southfield, Michigan, with the one and only Tom Kennedy. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. It's great to see you. It's great to see you, too. We have communicated so many times over the years via email and uh, text and whatever the kids do these days. This is the first time we've actually met in person, so it's a pleasure and an honor. It's great to see you. Oh, my pleasure, John. You have uh, you've done a lot of very cool stuff in your career, uh, starting at a very early age, as I recall from our first interview with you, which is on the site, by the way, for BassPlayersOnly.com. Just search Tom Kennedy, and it'll come right up about your upbringing in St. Louis and how you were pretty much a child playing with uh, the likes of Dizzy Gillespie, Sonny Stitt, James Moody, Freddie Hubbard. Uh, that must have been quite an experience. I know we touched on it last time, but uh, this looks like a good opportunity to, to get a little more information from you about it. Because in particular, you were so young, and these were pretty established jazz legends. So did they cut you some slack being the kid that you were, or did they, uh, did they encourage you? What was that uh, vibe that they gave off? Well, it was, it was really something. I think this is this is a key to kind of how we, our our careers developed was the fact that these guys gave no slack was the fact that these guys walked in there was very seldom any kind of a sound check or rehearsal of any kind because these were guys that were you know traveling around the country playing different venues with different rhythm sections constantly so they didn't care if you were you know if you were 8 or 80 it didn't matter you know you you were you were there to do a job and so i think you know, some of them gave us kind of a, a second take um, when they would see us because we were so young. I mean, the, I think I played the first time with Dizzy when I was 11, you know, and my brother was 14. And um, actually, Dizzy kind of knew my brother by reputation already and had met him before. And so basically, you know, these guys would come in and, you know, you'd have a full house in, in the place and they'd say, OK, well, do you know, uh, you know, rhythm changes? B flat. Yeah. One, two, one, two, three. And, and you're in. Quite an experience. Uh, you mentioned your brother, Ray. And un unfortunately, we lost him recently. But uh, boy, the first time I ever saw your name and his name was on Dave Weckl's first record. And uh, in particular, there's a trio tune on there, Softly as in a Morning Sunrise, which I just love. I love the bass solo on there. One day I'm going to transcribe it. But... Uh, uh, t tell me about Ray. Is there something that most people don't know about him? What would you like people to know about your brother Ray, and how would you like t him to be remembered? You know, the, we, j we did a couple of uh, memorial services for him. We did one in St. Louis in his hometown, you know, in our hometown, and we did another one in New York because he had so many people, so many friends, so many close, you know, people that just loved Ray. And I think that that's what I want people to remember as much as him being such a brilliant musician. He was such an amazing person and he was so nurturing to the musicians that, uh, that he worked with. Ray was just like that. And he was just very, very sweet and very genuine and very true to, you know, to the craft, you know, to the musicians, to, you know, the people that, you know, that, that made it happen. And I think, I think that's, you know, I think all of us that knew Ray and, 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 you know, obviously myself, but other musicians that knew Ray, I think, I think they would all agree with, with that. Well, thank goodness we have those recordings he left behind. Well, how about you? What's, what's keeping you busy these days? I know you're always doing something and you're always traveling and you're always going somewhere. What's up? Oh, you know, I continue to do a lot of things that I've been doing. Um, I play with Mike Stern a lot. Um, which is great because Mike changes up the band a lot, so I'm playing with a lot of great drummers, you know, especially, and great saxophone players. Uh, I'm doing a, a week with him at Blues Alley in D.C. Oh, I've been there. Uh, I saw Pancho Sanchez there once oh, yeah. on Halloween oh, years listen, ago. <laughs> that's, that's a great room, and as I said, Dennis Chambers is doing that this time. Uh, we've How's he doing? 
He's doing well. I mean, he's he's uh, you know he's back at, back to true form, and uh, you know we played. I guess we played about maybe eight or nine months ago at Blues Alley with Dennis, and Dennis, you know, had had some health problems, but was sounding amazing. I mean, really, really jumped right back in. Oh, that's good to hear. So I expect this this will be just a a ball. Uh, tell me about your equipment: basses, strings, amps, effects, etc. All right. Well, I'll I'll start with the Federa basses. I have a signature uh, bass, uh, the, the uh, Tom Kennedy signature bass, um, which is a is a neck through instrument. It's a five string bass um, with a single cutaway, like the Anthony Jackson style, <clears throat> which I think. Uh, Federa has been kind of noted for for the for the last few years, um, but I'm just introducing a Tom Kennedy standard bass, which is a single cutaway, but it's a bolt-on neck. Also Federa. It's also a Federa, yeah, and it's a bolt-on bass, um, which I think gives it a little bit more punch. I think it gives it a little more feel like a like a Fender bass, you know, a little bit more. Um, I call it funk. You know, it's just it's just a quicker quicker bass. It's a shorter scale. It's a 34 inch scale. My my signature bass is a 35, and I'm loving this new bass. It's it's just amazing. It's it's a joy to play. Um, and then I'm also uh, playing a, a a Chadwick folding acoustic bass now, which I'm really loving. And this is something that I just got about eight or nine months ago, and it actually allows me to travel. A really good quality acoustic bass, and to watch watch the thing come together though is is crazy. Uh, yeah, I saw a demonstration down in, in Nashville. That's where the guy is, right, Charlie? Yeah, he's in Nashville. Yeah, and and so I'm standing on stage. I remember the first time I took it out with the Weckl group, and I pulled the pulled the neck up, and <laughs> and we actually t- took a bunch of pictures of me like holding the neck like it was broken off the bass, you know, because it's it's just so such a crazy thing you know it's a crazy thing to see but in the, the end you're standing there with with a total you know acoustic yes. instrument that sounds, sounds as good as, as as my other you know as my others and so i've been touring a lot with that and i use diadario uh, uh hybrid strings on that which are really great and they complement the instrument well they're very easy to play and they're very balanced and consistent how about uh, how about amps I use Mark Bass exclusively. Yeah, I've been with them uh, for about the last six years, I guess, or seven years. How about effects? You, you a big effects guy? Not a big effects guy. You know, I, 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 I'm kind of of the old school approach of trying to make things sound different with your hands, you know, and doing whatever you... Good for you. Well, you know, it's, it's, you know what? It's a pain in the ass carrying that stuff around. And, you know, I did it for a while, and it's, and it's fun. I mean, I might use an envelope filter here and there or an octaver, you know, just, just for an effect here and there. But most of the time I find out when I, when, I'm, when I have them sitting there, I will use one effect once a night, you know. And so for me, I just really, you know, have never, have never had, a, had, a, had a need for it. How about the future, Tom? You uh, you hinted at a couple of things you have coming up, but uh, do you have a you know someday I'll or you know I've always wanted to you know what what would you like to do that you haven't already accomplished that you haven't mentioned? I think uh, you know, and I really feel ready uh, to kind of just you know go out and do do things on my own, you know, start trying to tour my own music. You know, I also want to start recording my own music, and I just haven't. You know, that's the one thing that's that's been in the back of my mind for many years because I'm so busy traveling with everyone else and having a ball, you know, and just loving that. But I want to start kind of opening up to writing a little more and being able to present my music, you know. Well, you'd be sure to keep us posted and we'll uh, we'll tell everybody. We'll tell these folks, certainly. Last question, Tom. Yep. And I, I think I might have asked you this last time, but I'm going to ask you again anyway. Okay. What would you be if you were not a bass player? Something outside of music. I think I said carpentry last time. I think I've always loved to, to build things, and I've, I've always been curious about how things fit. You know. Tom Kennedy, great catching up with you in person, and it's, uh, it's such a great story, and thanks so much. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. We'll keep enjoying it, and much luck and continued success to you always. Thank you. My pleasure, John. 
on location in Southfield, Michigan with Tom Kennedy. I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. <laughs>